Today, we're going to learn several different methods a hacker could use to bypass web server upload restrictions and exploit that web server on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If a hacker is able to upload a file to a web server, it is one of the most foolproof and reliable methods for deploying an exploit to that web server. The type of exploitations that can be used using this method ranges from everything from cross-site scripting to a full-blown PHP attack execution. Essentially, if a hacker is able to upload whatever kind of files they want to a web server, the possibilities for exploitation are limitless. Obviously, the people and IT admins who host these web servers are aware of this. So they'll deploy several methods to keep hackers from deploying executions via file upload. These can be um, filters such as blacklists and whitelists, or other type of methods to flag nefarious files which could be uploaded to their server. Hackers can bypass uh, filters by changing the file type, so changing it from a lowercase PHP, which is a normal PHP file extension, to a capital PHP, which might not be included inside the, the filter. Additionally, hackers can layer their PHP uh, exploited code with another type of file, making it may hopefully bypassing the server. Additionally, a method we'll see today is how to encode various types of exploits in inside of files which are normally not deemed as nefarious. For example, a hacker can hide some PHP code inside a JPEG file and then deploy the PHP code through that JPEG file, which can almost always bypass filters. We're going to learn about these methods and more on this demonstration. And in order to follow this tutorial, all you need is a computer which can upload files to a computer or a different web server. If you had any problems following this video tutorial, you can always just check out the Wonder How To article, which is linked down in the description. Let's get started. So this tutorial is already assuming that you already have your PHP script ready to go, and I have it here in my directory. It's just my payload.php file, and this PHP file can be generated in many different ways. So um, it could be from a Metasploit exploit that is well known, and Metasploit developed it for you, so you had to have this uh, PHP script ready to go. It could be a custom written PHP script for an exploit that you discovered or some other hacker discovered. So how you got the PHP script is important for this tutorial. I'm just going over several different methods that you can use to obfuscate this PHP file so it's not recognized as a nefarious file by the server that you're uploading it to. So the first method we're going to be covering is um, bypassing a blacklist. So in case you don't know, a blacklist is basically a list of certain keywords, file extensions or phrases, or types of metadata on the file, anything that the server recognizes as something that's bad and it's not going to allow through its filter. So for example, if the filter on the web server doesn't allow any kind of PHP file whatsoever, it can be done in several ways. And one way that is more common than you'd think, but it's pretty dumb, is just by simply not allowing this .php extension. This is not sufficient to block PHP scripts because of several different reasons. One way you can use to get around this is the fact that PHP actually has several different alternate extensions. So if you pull up a neat website called Hackers Guy Realm, and if it loads over here, right here. So it will show you several different file extensions for PHP. So you can do, instead of doing .php, which is the most common, you can do .php3, .php4, .php5, and .inc, and those will all work as a PHP file, but it might be able to pass through the server's blacklist. So really quickly, very simple, I'll just show you, you guys probably already know how to do this, but to rename your PHP file something that is less likely to get uh, noticed, Let's change it to PHP3, for example. We can just uh, copy this file payload.php as payload.php3. And it should still work as a normal PHP file, and hopefully it can pass through the server's blacklist. Alternative methods include not using PHP altogether, but something called JSP which is similar to PHP, as in PHP is mostly used to interact with uh, web interfaces, but JSP is written in a more Java-like syntax, and it's less common than PHP, so it's less likely to appear on a web server's blacklist than a PHP, PHP filter. Another one that's kind of dumb, but also can work, which is kind of surprising, is simply just by changing the, um, the case of the PHP. 
So if we copy payload.php as something like payload, dot capital PHP or capital PH lowercase p. It sounds really dumb, but sometimes it might actually work and get past the web server's blacklist. And then this is just something that honestly, I think if the web server isn't filtering for stuff like a capital PH and lowercase p, I don't wanna say they deserve to get exploited, but they should at least be notified that their web server's blacklist is not sufficient enough to prevent um, an exploit. So that's how you would bypass some very, very simple blacklists. But you can also, something that might be trickier is by passing a whitelist. And so a whitelist is just the opposite of a blacklist, where a blacklist says, I'm not allowing these files, I'm not allowing these certain um, key phrases to be passed through my filter. A whitelist is even more strict. A whitelist is only allowing specific things. For example, like Flickr or Imager or other like file hosting servers might only allow file extensions that are related to pictures. So they might only allow .jpegs, .pngs, dot GIF, stuff like that. But sometimes they're dumb enough to, if you just add a second extension, then you can just pass the PHP code in normally. So if we just copy payload.php as payload.php.jpg, um, then this extension might be able to actually get past a payload and as you can see, even my the default Linux terminal recognizes it as a picture, as you can see, because it's highlighted it in uh, purple, just because it's looking at the last extension there to determine what kind of file it is. And so this might be able to get through a stricter web server's whitelist. If this isn't working, sometimes if you add a null byte at the end of this .php, then the web server's filtering software is not even going to even recognize those characters and it'll pass through all together. So if it sees this PHP and recognizes, nope, that's not allowed on our whitelist, you can have a null byte and sometimes it'll also get through. So to do that, you can just copy payload.php and then you add a null byte and this can be done with a backslash or a percentile or a modulus symbol. And you just add two zeros and then .jpg. And as you can see, it reads normally here, but some server software might negate all this together and it will allow this PHP script to pass through the filter. So if those last two methods work of bypassing a blacklist or a whitelist, if those aren't sufficient enough, you can do something a little more sneaky and slip in a PHP payload in a uh, JPEG file. And that's why I've had this um, picture.jpg file in here. So if I just open it, uh, if you give it a second, it should open. And as you can see, it's just a normal picture. There's actually right now, there's nothing nefarious about this picture. This is just a completely normal picture. But if we alter the exit data, which is kind of like metadata specifically for pictures, it relays information to the computer about how this picture format should be handled and other specifics about the format. If we alter this exit data, while the server is scanning the file, which most web servers do, they completely scan the file. And obviously this web server is scanning the files if there's a blacklist and whitelist. Um, it'll read this exit data and it'll actually execute the PHP code if the file, if the web server is not configured correctly. So to do this, there is a free tool called the Exif tool. Um, if you're running Kali Linux, it might be already installed, but if not, you can just do a simple apt get or whatever the um, respective command is for your specific Linux distribution and exif tool. And I already have it installed, so I can go ahead and use it. So just navigate to the same directory where the picture you wanna apply the payload is. So you just navigate to this directory and then you can use exif tool and then add a comment, which is actually some PHP code. I think it's actually a bash script that's telling PHP code to execute to be very specific. But nevertheless, you can just add this comment. And this exact, in case you don't wanna type this out again, this exact string of text is on the Wonder How To article, which is linked down in the description. Oops, sorry, that's in the system. And then this is where it's actually executing the code. Git cmd. And then we're going to tell it to apply it to pick.jpg. Okay, and it says that file is uploaded. And now if we go back to um, it's saved. Exif tool saves our original file and it saves the altered JPEG file. So if I go ahead and actually open pick.jpg, probably annoying to be that I'm saying JPEG, not JPG, but uh, nevertheless, pick.jpg, uh, oop, not xcg, get 
xcg open. Um, yeah, so as you can see, it's just the same file. But if I look at the metadata, metadata for this file, then I can see that there's some PHP code hidden in there. File pick.jpg. And if I see the metadata, it contains stuff like this is this is what the exif da uh, data is. It's JPEG image data. It tells you the aspect ratio, or it should. Yeah, there's an aspect ratio. And then here's a comment, which is actually some uh, bash script telling PHP code to execute. And so that's just several different methods a hacker can use to bypass several different filters that a web server admin could set up. And obviously these are simple examples, but there's ways hackers could get more creative and bypass more sophisticated web filters. And this is just a continuing arms race that's going on between white hat hackers and black hat hackers versus IT admins and web server hosts. So the IT server, the IT admins will set up more sophisticated blacklists, whitelists, and more sophisticated software to analyze all these files being uploaded. And these are millions of files being uploaded every hour, every second to their server. So obviously it has to be automated. And then on the other hand, hackers are reverse engineering how these filters are working and figuring out sneaky ways to get by them. And these are just the baseline, most simple ways that hackers could use to bypass these filters. And these are very simple methods that hackers could build upon to bypass more sophisticated filters. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP Zap, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst prep course. Check out the link in the description below. If you're hosting even a relatively small web server, this demonstration might have scared you from hosting it all together. But don't worry, you can apply some extra security measures behind your filters to keep exploits from being deployed even if they get uploaded to your server. For example, the file that you can store all user file uploads in, you can turn off execution privileges so the, that these exploits are never actually executed in the first place. And additionally, you might want to look into more advanced database storage methods and not use a conventional file storage system so that these exploits can't be deployed either. Again, if you had any problems with this video tutorial, just check out the article, which is linked down in the description. If you have any ideas for a future video, you can always find me on Twitter at Nick Godshell. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.